Welcome back. I'm playing More Time City of the Damned, and I think we'll get started on our next faction campaign here. I think what I'll do is the Undead. I seem to remember that they were actually a pretty powerful faction and a pretty easy uh, campaign to complete because your heroes cause fear and terror, and then I think they still have access to the Poison Globideers. Their guys have uh, debuffs that they can apply to the enemy forces, and if you lose your zombies, they end up uh, not affecting your morale, which is a unique mechanic. Now, the big downside to these guys is they don't have much for ranged units, so almost everything is melee, unless you're going to be using spellcasters. I think the heroes themselves can use ranged weapons, but your henchmen I don't think can. I don't think ghouls nor zombies can do that, so that is kind of the downside. But they are definitely a powerhouse when it comes to melee, so we'll see if I can make this work. So the undead. The vassals of Count Vlad von Karstein include both living and the undead, for the vampire lord knows the utility of mortals and the weaknesses of his own kind. Whether the living or dead, all are his servants, sworn to the master's will, while the courts of Altdorf, Middenheim, and Marienburg all squ squabble over the emperor's crown. Few suspect that the tyrant of Sylvania, Sylvania has his own designs. The warbands who have journeyed to Mordheim are sent to gather wardstone that the dark magic bound into the shards can be harnessed and used to create more undead. They are both cunning and ruthless, for any foe that falls to their blades may rise again to serve Sylvania. So let's see what we can do here. And we'll just go at the lowest ranks here so we can get the full uh, effect here instead of jumping right up to a level 5 warband and going from there because it'll also allow us to have a little bit of a learning curve. You have been paid a great honor by our Lord and Master, Count Vlad von Karstein. Among his subjects, living and undead, it is you who have been entrusted with this important task. I wonder if you appreciate the enormity of the task ahead of you. The Master expects much from you. I can sense your suspicion of me. It is true that I once served Queen Neferata, but it is in the halls of Drakenhof that my loyalty is now bound. Do you see this ring? It is Count Vlad's token, his sign that Baroness Katarina von Dernsbach is his vassal and agent. Beware, for I am his eyes and ears in Mordheim. What I learn, the Master will know. Look upon the ruin of Mordheim. The mortals fear this desolation. Only the bold or desperate come here to scavenge and steal. Only the most fanatical come here to claim this devastation for their gods. The earth, the waters, even the very air have become tainted by the dark energies that have wrought this destruction. Nothing that lives can linger here long without being transformed in either flesh or spirit. Such concerns matter little to us. Our magic will sustain us against the malignity of the ruins. For the danger is little when set against the reward. The power that lies scattered about Mordheim offers a key to feats of necromancy not dead since Great Nagash walked the land. Littered about the ruins are the weird stone shards, vessels of incredible arcane energies. In the hands of Count Vlad, these shards will transform the world, tearing down the fractious realms of men. Your duty is clear. Find the weird stone, and you will have a share in Count Vlad's mighty ambition. Fail him, and I promise, you will find there is no escape from his rage, even in the grave. Alright, so kind of the same opening as before here. So the Mordheim City of the Damned is a game about making the most of a dire situation and designed as a hardcore experience. The decisions you take while leading your warband are permanent and your actions in combat may lead to irreversible injuries for your warriors. The campaign will end after the fourth time you fail to deliver Wardstone shipments into your fa to that bleh, war word show shipment request to your faction. Plan carefully and gird yourself against the horrors of Mordenheim. So, the veteran system is technically locked until we hire some guys, so as we learned the last time, you can, uh, if you're going to get the most bang for your buck, you'll want to hire uh, a low tier unit here. So we'll just hire one zombie, because that's only 15 gold, and that should unlock the veteran system. And then, I will use the skill points here to select the guys we had before, uh, probably the same abilities. Uh, this lowers the upkeep for impressives which was definitely a good ability. Uh, we'll reduce the buying price of items by 20% since we will like to buy items. 
the selling price doesn't really help you until the very end game, but we will select that. Healer reduces the cost of treatment, and you will regularly have to pay for treatment, so any little bit helps avoid that. We do definitely want to reduce the cost of training skills, because as you saw, that's very expensive. And then we want to increase the chance of a sales event, because that will get us better items and possible um, spells. Now, I rarely use this. Perhaps I will use the negotiator because that will allow us to just keep pushing and that will increase the warp stone. Now I didn't really hire much for renowned troops the last game so perhaps it would make sense for me not to do that but if I do have to hire the renowned hmm I mean the librarian could be very good with those spells at the very end of the game. Explorer can be good too, but again, I rarely use it. I think I'm going to play around with the Librarian this time, because it 10% chance to receive a free normal enchantment formula, and if I master it, it increases to 15% and also unlocks the chance of gaining a mastery formula. And when I came to the very end game, it seemed like I was missing tons of those formulas. So let's actually do that this time and see how that goes. I might definitely regret not having some renowned units, because I guess I do technically hire the new ones but they're low tier, so that was probably a mistake. I could respec it. Let's actually do that. Alright, so that's how that works. Alright. Let's see, what do we have here? We had the Evaluator. Hagler. The Healer. Yeah, I don't know. I still think maybe it would have been fine to do it the other way, because I think it would have worked out to be more advantageous. But I'm just worried if I suffer losses and I need to hire those renowned guys, or if I, uh, even when I hire them for the first time, that'll significantly drop their costs, I think, because by 20%, because we're going to have to hire multiple hero sorcerers, things like that anyways. And I think even at level zero, they're still considered... Uh, heroes are renowned, so I think that would reduce their cost by a 20%. And now that everything is cheaper, we can start hiring new guys. So we have a vampire. He's acting as our leader. Among the most fearsome creatures that have been drawn to the ruins of Mordheim are the vampires that lead undead warbands. Ruthless, intelligent, and endowed with strength to rival that of an ogre. They enjoy greater versatility and independence other than other undead they are the aristocracy of the night, viewing mortals as either slaves or prey. Their dark powers are dedicated to serving Count Vlad. So let's see, you can pretty much use most weapons it looks like. And he does have access to heavy armor and he will have 15 strength so we can turn him into a big tank guy. He's immune to those things and he's immune to poison so those are some pretty big perks there. And for our secondary hero, we do have access to Poison Globideers, which we will definitely want to make use of. But... So why are some of these zero cost? And other ones 24 and 40. I'm not sure what's going on there. But we're going to hire a Dreg, because that's our basic secondary hero here. And many of those who survived the collapse of Mordheim were left deformed in body and mind, rejected and despised. These human dregs eke out a miserable existence at the fringes of civilization. Often these wretches are recruited by vampires, becoming loyal servants in exchange for protection. They guard coffins during the day and venture into the settlements where vampires might draw unwanted attention. Let's see, these guys can also do heavy weapons, and they have 15 strength. So, let's see, death stench immunity... Immune to death stench. Okay. So I might just turn these guys into big tanky boys. I mean, this is one of the guys that could be a very good uh, archer here, too, if you wanted to use him that way. But I think with the heavy armor and everything, I'm just going to kit him out to be more melee builds, unless I have difficulty finding equipment for him. And then we've got the zombie. The simplest form of undead that can be created through necromancy. Zombies are reanimated re corpses of the recently dead. 
without violation of their own volition of their own. They are automatons that mindlessly follow the will of their creator. They know neither fear nor pain, only obedience. You can only have five at once. They can only use cloth armor, it looks like. And unfortunately, they don't get much for dodge for having to use cloth armor. So that's kind of a bummer. Cannot buy Lad's Got Talent skill. That's fine. I never use that anyways. And then our Ghoul is our other guy here. So Ghouls that serve Count Vlad are descendants of the degenerate villages that turned back to necrophagy and cannibalism during the Black Plague and the famines that followed. Their unholy diet altered them, turning them in from human into grave-haunting fiends. The filth-caked talons of these monsters are venomous. A single scratch can deliver a necromantic contagion that will rot living flesh from the inside out. Drawn to places of death, many packs of ghouls have crept into Mordheim to feed on both the living and the dead. And these guys also are lightly armored, but they have much more evasion. They have last stand, always fight to the death. Okay. They're immune to those things. They're feral. Cannot use consumables. So I think we're definitely going to go with more of a ghoul build. Oop, I thought I hired them. I guess not. Because I think they're going to be much stronger for us. Now, what do these guys have for their basic? Disease carrier. On melee damage, inflict a random debuff. Minus 5 initiative or minus 3% critical resistance or minus 3% dodge and parry. All debuffs are stackable. Last three turns and increases damage received from the spell Rotten Touch by 5%. Okay, so those, they're actually quite good for that. And what about our other passives for the undead? What do we got? Body Reconstruction increases critical hit resistance. Embedded Ward Stones increases resistance and grants immunity to all quarter. Yeah, I don't care about that. Find the Breach increases armor bypass. So this will be helpful, so we'll likely want to get that on all of our guys. And then what about the zombies? What do they got? They've got Puppet as their basic ability. The zombie is bound to its masters. Ritual ingredients must be paid for the form of an upkeep. The zombie will gain experience and receive four less skill points than regular henchmen. Failing to perform the ritual for an extended period weakens the bond, causing zombie to decay and be destroyed. What the hell does that mean? Rotten corpse. Immune to open wound effects and all injuries except destroyed. Severed arm, severed leg, hand injury, full recovery. It must roll for injuries at the end of combat as a 20% chance to decay and effectively be destroyed. Every rank of the zombie reduces his chance. Dude, that sucks. Alright, we're doing ghouls, man. Screw zombies. Alright, and what do you got here? So you've got terror. Enemies who engage or start the turn engaged with the user must perform a terror test failing the test reduces the maximum offense and strategy points by three which was terrible when i had to fight this the debuff persists until passing a terror test on turn start passing any terror test will grant immunity for one turn and then do you guys have access no same abilities and how about our drag humble servant sacrifices 25 wounds restores 15 wounds and grants a buff that increases initiative by 15 only affects Vampire and Thralls. Vampire Thralls. Okay, interesting. I actually don't mind that because I like choosing my own passive abilities because then they can make them into a better unit. I don't know about this Humble Servant thing. I mean, I guess if somebody was about to die, that could be helpful. But I think I'm going to be turning a lot of these guys into Parriers. And just major damage dealers. Yes. All right, let's get some light armors here, some amulets, helmet, and I do like maces for the increased chance to hit. That increases crit chances. I don't know if I'll need the spears, but I'll buy some. I don't know, I'll buy a longbow, I guess. take a look at our equipment here so you default to a spear I'd rather you have a mace I definitely want you to have a helmet and let's see your dodge is 40% I'll just give you that for the 
because I think it's more worthwhile. You're fine. Your dodge and stuff is almost the same, so let's just get you that. I guess we'll give you an amulet. I could give you a longbow. But I think early on in the game you have enough trouble hitting things to begin with because of all the points it takes. I think I'll just put you into a melee stance. Now the ghouls, I don't think ghouls can use shields, right? I'm almost positive that they can't. Does it fall under armor? Yeah, it does, so they can't use shields. You guys, I think, can though, right? Yeah. So that's the trade-off here. Well, let's get you the armor, I guess. Or get you the... You can just keep the axes on. Yep, I think that should be good. And our campaign. Pretty much you can just go on one deployment per turn and then you gotta rest. You only have one attempt. And looks like we got a nice uh, warpstone rush to start us off with this, so we'll see how this goes. Alright, and then I was just thinking about this a little bit more. And then with them only having three offensive points... I think it would make sense to give these guys two-handed weapons because they don't have a shield and then I can give them two, wep two one-handed weapons too and that will increase their damage output. So I think that's a much smarter way of doing this. And then I'm just not totally sold on these zombies. So I think I want to go with an all ghoul build here and then I can stack debuffs and maybe once I become stronger I can start to uh, use uh, the zombies here. Now I think these guys can use hammers, right? So I'm gonna give him a hammer. So I can give him, not you, him more damage. Yeah, see now it doubled his damage output here. Just as you were closing to engage a rival warband, the horrific manifestation of the ghostly town crier causes both groups of warriors to flee in terror. As the apparition fades away, your warriors recover their courage. Scattered in their fright, your warband is spread out across the ruins, but so too are your enemies. A new round has started. Alright, so several patches of uh, warpstone here, so... Hopefully we'll be able to run over there and get to some of it. It's actually quite a bit of it around here. So there's my cart. I could run up that way. Damn it. Bad start there. Oh my god, that's two of them. They're all fragments, but that's not unexpected, given that it's very poor quality. I think we'll just run you up here. Here we go. There's three shards. Objectives updated. Objectives updated. Objectives updated. Now, unlike our Skaven, unfortunately, collecting warp stone is going to cause us to get debuffs, most likely. Yeah, see the enemy heroes right there. So that's kind of a bummer when we want to fill up our inventory with all that stone. Oh, of course the door's shut. So now I'm going to have to run all the way around. And I guess if I come down this way I can get some more stone, but it's a long way to go. I wonder if there's a jump off point up here, or if all this is still blocked off too. Okay, we got something here. I'll get you to the back. Yeah. Looks like there's not a great jump off point here, so maybe it does make sense to just walk out. Looks like there's a couple of fragments over here too. 
Let's see, and I can have you start picking these zones up too. So if you get updated. negative traits, then we should hopefully have a turn down updated. where it'll be ticking off before we start Objectives engaging updated. an enemy. I guess we'll just have to work on trying to gather over here. And we'll turn into a big slugfest outside the uh, chaos cart is what I suspect is going to happen here. Ah, of course the door's shut. Man, this is not working well for me. Alright, looks like he's following my lead and he's giving his guys A new two round has weapons here too. Alright, good. Only dr almost dropped on 50% of health. Objectives updated. So really, on your first couple levels, Objectives updated. when you're fighting against the AI, you're both extremely weak. And so doing some subtle Objectives damage updated. increases can really increase your chance Objective of completed. absolutely decimating the uh, battlefield here. And you're full. So I kind of feel like I should be coming in after these guys here. And I might as well charge because I only have one attack. And of course you missed. But it gives me the opportunity to use a dodge stance. So that's not too bad. Alright. And okay. We can get you around the back here. And start running you around this way. Your backpack is full. Yeah, nothing really that interesting there to collect. Alright. Nice. Dropped him down. Your backpack is open. Oh, look at that. He's already collected three warp stones for us. Let's see, so it looks like he's got a couple of henchmen just kind of hanging around. I'm going to try to get you back to the cart so then I can start selecting some more items here. That guy only has a, a dagger, has started. so I think he'd be a perfect opportunity for us to go chase down and smack. He shouldn't be able to do a ton of damage to us. I'll charge into him. I'm not going to be really parrying or anything this early on, so I might as well just use the extra points to do the damage. And now that he's engaged and doesn't have a counterattack, try to charge you over here. Big hit. Now, likewise, you have to be very careful early on because these guys can do the same thing I'm doing to you, and that can be significant damage. I was kind of thinking he was going to get the kill there. Alright, so he's got a big two-handed weapon. Alright, I don't think there's any way for me to attack the other henchmen, so I guess we'll just come over here. Start smacking the great handed or the great sword down. And then this early on, the AI doesn't have much for... Uh, action points either. So if he fails the terror test, he effectively doesn't get an attack. So it's like he has two different checks A to see if he will uh, get to attack. <laughs> nice. I think he only has one guy left here now. No, he must have this, his leaders around here. I haven't seen him yet, so he must be stuck somewhere. Here we go. Oh, I never grabbed that shard, though. Damn it. I got a nice blue armor. Your performance has validated the trust Count Vlad has placed in you. Demonstrate your loyalty and enjoy the favor of the Von Karsteins. Wow, oh, look at that. Nice experience. Already almost leveled on the very first mission here. All 
Alright, we'll get his strength up and weapon skill to get his parry going. Same thing with you. Now your leadership is absolutely shit. So let's do that. Get you probably up to six because that'll get you another inventory slot. Now your leadership, he's unwavering so I don't think it makes any sense to put points into leadership. So let's put it into intelligence. So that way we get some stun resistance. Because these guys also can't wear any helmets. And so they're going to be very at risk for getting stunned. So getting that intelligence up I think is going to be a key of importance for us here. The damage output to the ghouls is definitely very high. So I'm, I'm definitely digging that a little bit here. At five action points, I could give these guys two different uh, weapons too to increase their damage output. But I kind of like them having the shields, especially if I'm going to be giving them the light armors because their dodge chance isn't going to be very good. And the shields themselves give you some melee shipment resistance. shipment request arrived. Let's see, it's only 75, so even on our very first mission, we're greater than 50% of the way there. We've got a nice warpstone rush for our second mission here, so I think we'll go through... Just as you were closing to engage a rival warband, the horrific manifestation of the ghostly town crier causes both groups of warriors to flee in terror. As the apparition fades away, your warriors recover their courage. Scattered in their fright, your warband is spread out across the ruins, but so too are your enemies. A new round has started. Alright, so in addition to the shield giving you the melee resistance, the parry ability, you know, the other thing with having the one-handed weapon is uh, it also allows me to do one charge attack. Nice, all the warp stone is here. And then uh, follow it up with updated. a regular attack, whereas if you do a charge attack, Objective which usually updated. costs an extra offense point, then because you have a two-handed weapon or two single-handed weapons, then you have the tiring trait. Objectives updated. And that will prevent you from doing a follow-up attack. So that's the other benefit of doing this. So I guess I'm going to have to be running back and forth to my cart and dropping off the warp stone here. Although I don't think other factions call it warp stone. I think that's only a Skaven thing. But I prefer that uh, terminology myself. Because uh, it seems like there's controversy about whether you call it weird stone or word stone. And I don't really have a whole bunch of knowledge on the uh, Warhammer fantasy, so I don't know what's correct. Seems like even during some of these dialogue on the missions descriptions, they call it different things. Uh, we got some fanatics here, so we're... Oh shit, that was close. Alright, and of course your door is shut. That just seems to be the running theme on this campaign so far. I hope this is not foreshadowing of things to come. Alright, we'll try to not only do good damage, but also to trigger all alone checks here. Because early on, everybody's a bunch of cowards. And let me guess, door's going to be shut? Well, there is a chest back there, but generally this early in the campaign, the rewards are not very good. So I usually they're focused focus on the warp stone or getting kills so I don't get taken out. I think if I kind of position myself a little bit better here, I might be able to set myself up with a charge. Maybe? No. the It's too obstructed. Alright, you are right here. Let's jump down. It's going to make me do a double jump, isn't it? Alright, well, let's get you over here. And then hopefully we get some of those shards. Because fragments are worth 1, shards are worth 5, and then clusters are worth 15. So you really want to strategically grab the ones that you can here. Alright, he's down. 
Now, if I run in the circle here, he can't do his charge attack. But if I would have gotten outside that circle zone of control, then he would have charged me. And that, when you do a charge attack for that increased offensive point cost, what it effectively does is uh, increase your damage. You can also strategically use that ability Objective that if you're updated. just a, if you're new into combat and it's you've only got Objectives like uh, two strategy points left, Objectives you typically updated. want to put yourself into a dodge, parry, or other sort of stance. Objective completed. And you can charge into combat to save that movement points. That's another important thing to realize with these. Let's see. I think if I send you down this way should be good. I'd really like to keep running back and forth here and getting that warp stone, but... A new round has stopped. Nice. See? They're kind of sissies early on. Another one's down. Take the great flail. I kind of want to send you over here to just start taking out this guy. Because if I can also terrorize him, then we can really nullify his leader. Because he is a powerhouse. And then you can run and get the stone. I was kind of hoping I could set you up in a way to collect multiple stones, but it doesn't look like that's going to be a thing. Alright. Drop him. Probably just pick up his weapons because he's probably going to fail his morale check here. I can see if I can run you over here because if he doesn't, then I can have my other guys get there. You're full. So let's drop you off. Yeah, my cart, my chest doesn't have very much room this early in the game. Set you up with an ambush stance. Should be some good damage if he runs into it. Alright, pretty mediocre rewards, but as expected early on. Your in the performance game. has validated the trust Count Vlad has placed in you. Demonstrate your loyalty and enjoy the favor of the von Karsteins. The gods are with you. Alright, first level. Nice down. progress. Remarkable. N nice progress. Your warband is getting stronger. All right, pay our guys off here. And keep focusing on strength so we can master our... Uh, armor specialist so we can use the heavy armor. And then with his leadership, I don't think I need to really put points into that because he's immune to those checks. And I think with these guys now, we just start turning them into dodgers and focus on weapon skill. You could put a bunch of points into accuracy to really help them do crit damage, but I think I'd rather increase the chance to hit. I think that's more important. Let's see. Do I want to hire a second leader to start my training regimen is the question. Armor proficiency. I could do that and I can throw him in heavy armor and that will reduce his movement penalty by 50%. Mm -hmm. I could also do this on you as well. Let's, we got a, another henchman profile unlock, so we might as well do that. Get you a dagger. Guess we'll just give you the amulet here. Ah, uh, do I want to start training these guys this early on? I could just give them quick incision. That's a one day turnaround, and that's always a nice ability to have. 
Doesn't look like his accuracy is very good, though, so I don't know if I'm going to have enough points. It's 100, so that's Ballistic, Agility, Leadership, Alertness, Intelligence, Strength is Tier 2, so I'm not going to get Strength anytime soon. Toughness, Weapon Skill, Spell Discount. Of course, the ones I'm most interested in are the ones that are high tier levels for unlocking. I think I'm going to call quits here for the day. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please give my channel a like and subscribe to encourage me to post some more content for you. Have a great day.